and we are back. We are back. We're back. We're back. Uh, I wanted to <laughs> go back into that one time. I wrote CXE in 1996. Mm -hmm. There was no such thing as social media at that time. Mm -hmm. Social media is a big part of business today. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, have you, do you know or do you plan to incorporate teaching social media when you're teaching the, the young people business? Because I remember at that time it was Sean, it was frowned upon. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and even today I realize that I still have things to learn about how to use social media yeah. for the business. Is that something that you plan to teach? Yeah, definitely. I mean, while I may not teach it directly, you get persons who are experts in the particular area. Social media is a very powerful tool, very, very powerful, but it has to be used strategically. Mm -hmm. There is the myth, and I believe it's a myth because I see it in business, where mm -hmm. persons believe if you post something, you will get business. Likes is not customers. No, nah, and exactly. Likes is not Shift business. The time all year. Right? So, so <laughs> people have this myth and they look at some of the influencers and they don't know how long they're doing what they're doing in the background. Mm -hmm. yeah. To eventually get a particular point. Mm -hmm. And persons think if the post their liver strings out and they don't understand, it takes time to create things. It takes time to make these things. Mm -hmm. And they're actually spending your entrepreneur dollars mm -hmm. because your time could be used to do something so else. Mm -hmm. So social media could appear to be free, but it's not. Mm -hmm. So you have to know how to use it strategically for your business. Yeah, I can tell you, I post things on social media, but a big portion of my business is also offline. Mm -hmm. Connecting with people, talking with people, building relationships, because that's a big part. And social media is meant to support, it's meant to validate, it's meant to also engage and bring awareness to those who may not be aware of me or, or just awareness of what may be happening mm -hmm. but you cannot depend on social media mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. the mechanism to bring in business you will you, you would never business after a while <laughs> yeah and, and i think some of the young persons think that that's you the yes you post something on instagram you get 300 likes and then you're waiting for a phone call you're yeah. waiting for a dm to ask if I, or somebody dm you and when they hear your price mm -hmm. they start to back off but that's another thing boy you know <laughs> we're willing to pay all kinds of people Mm -hmm. All ridiculous kind of money for things for outside things. out here. Yes. Yeah. And when it comes to what we do in Trinidad, it comes to our own heritage, our own brain power, our own inventions. Mm -hmm. We treat it as second class. We treat it as second class. So you find there is no pride in who we are as a people and what we do. And I want to say none, little, mm -hmm. because there are, there, there are persons who have it. Yeah. Um, something as simple as buying local as much as you could. Mm -hmm. True, it may be a little bit more expensive, but even in terms of if you study the economy of the country, you would choose to buy local yeah. because you will recognize it will, buy, it, it will help with the foreign exchanges we have yeah. and it will cause funds to circulate. And the more so, exactly. People doesn't want to hear that from me, you know. But she have a master, so they might listen. <laughs> no, but I mean, I'll tell you this, eh? Mm -hmm. And it, this guy said it. And I guess because he's famous, people would hear Elon Musk. But mm -hmm. something I always used to say, mm -hmm. the drug dealers outside, they know more business than half the business professors out here. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> because they understand how to run their enterprise. That's their right. leadership skills on point, you know. Yeah. They may be using it for criminal activity, mm -hmm. but to run a massive enterprise, international, mm -hmm. under the radar mm -hmm. of law enforcement. Mm -hmm. Big In thriving. Law enforcement. In Massive hierarchies. Mm -hmm. Those fellas are master leaders. Mm -hmm. They know how to lead. Yeah. They know how to manage. They know how to run business. Yeah. It's just and that they use that's, the, that's what it is. They we see this in skills. Trinidad. Yeah. We see it in Trinidad. It are names we could call. We know them as bad man. But when you sit down and you look at them fellas' organization, I mean, when before Sandman did, Sandman was running Santa Cruz, the whole yeah. of the North, the, the North Coast, he was running nothing car past Strop there without him. But at the end of the day, he was doing what he was supposed to do. Yeah. And we're not seeing that. How and we are allowing our children to get caught up in things like that. How do we uh, bring this aspect and this idea of teaching leadership? Because remember, based on how we went to school, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what we see and thing, we know for sure we, we didn't, we wasn't exposed to that. Yeah. How do we bring that into the culture today? Because we spoke about this in previous shows where um, it's like, it's a, 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 it's a factory. Mm -hmm. Secondary school, especially at CXA level, that's a factory, that's the outlet for the factory workers. Mm -hmm. So you go to school, thing, nothing prepares you for world of work 
or the life outside of school, mm -hmm. but then they expect you to go and work and be a responsible adult. Right. How do we combat that with your leadership programs? Right. I want to I want to approach it from two two angles. Even in terms of our own, I think African history, our own perspective on ourselves. Mm -hmm. To me, I see two, two groups of people. I see persons who they focus on what would have happened to us mm -hmm. as a people. Mm -hmm. And they're people with, with a strength and a calling and, and they have the, the, the drive to do that. And, and that has its, its, its purpose and its place. Mm -hmm. And then there is a group who they are more focused on how do we move this thing forward? Mm -hmm. How do we get to a generation in the future that doesn't have any residue mm -hmm. of coming from an enslaved people? And uh, while we have persons who want to move forward, I think some people are trapped mm -hmm. going around in circles about what they have been through. Just this morning, I told my son, I said to him, I know as a young person, you're tough. And I wouldn't say it, sit here and tell you, well, you won't show you nothing. Because based on where you are, it's tough. Mm -hmm. Because SEA student, SEA is tough for them. Mm -hmm. And when you get to CX, you see CX is tough for them. Mm -hmm. So where he is, it's tough. And I said to him, but even though it is tough, it's not an excuse not mm -hmm. to show up for life. Mm -hmm. Sure. It's not an excuse not to show up for life. I think that's the first aspect. We as a people need to know, despite all that has happened, Upon to us, mm -hmm. we now need to show up yes. for life. Yes. We, yes, we have what we went through, and as I said, there are people who skilled and and that that it has its place because there are a lot of discussions happening with that I think is good. Mm -hmm. But when you want to hold on to that as the reason why you're stuck, mm -hmm. then you're misusing. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, I agree. What that's you're misusing our history. That's right. That's right. I'm so, listening. Misusing the history. So then, once you make that decision to move forward you know what you start to do you start to seek ways to go mm -hmm. you start to seek ways to grow and i'm going to put out i mean because it's already in the making leadership programs for youths and young um, teens and young people because i really want to start to invest in them, in them so they can know from the it is i didn't have that i can give to them right right so that that is in the making but still you know who would come adults and not only adults the people who actually need it wouldn't come. Yeah. Hmm. The people, that is what I have found. The people who actually need it doesn't come. Unless they get to the point of recognizing they have to show up for their life. As I tell my son, I say, you see the future you? The future you needs present you to show up. Mm -hmm. The future you needs present you to show up. It may be tough, it may be hard, it may not even have all these skills. I put in things in place for even scholarships and sponsorship because not everybody may have the funds to come. Mm -hmm. That shouldn't be by you. Mm -hmm. Come and get the skills so that you can have what you need to move forward. Yeah. I have to invest mm -hmm. in people. I have to invest because I was invested in too. Mm -hmm. Right? But then the, they have to show up. That is one of the issues. How do we get to some of the parents, boy? Because some of the things I have encountered, in yeah, yeah, I try my best to talk to younger people than myself, right? Mm -hmm. At 42 years old, I don't consider myself no old or no nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, but I see the need for talking to the 15 to the 17 yeah. year olds and them because at, at that age, I had no guidance on life. Mm -hmm. I had the, the, the guidance of my parents do, the, do this, do that thing, but to prepare me for life, I had none of that. Mm -hmm. And I realized how crucial yeah. that age is there. How do we reach some of the parents who would be probably thinking either, oh, they ain't ready for that, or it's something I can't afford without even knowing what's the price, mm -hmm. or <laughs> just ignorant to it at all, but where the child might not even want to go and say, well, mommy, daddy, it had this course I want to go and do. How do we get to them parents? Tell you this, sir. After spending the time that I did at Children's Authority, Based on the statistics, the alleged perpetrators of abuse, highest ranked was mothers at the time. Was? I was there. Mothers, mothers uh, biological. Mm. Followed by biological fathers. Mm. Then by step parents. So when you put the whole thing together, mm. and I'm talking about that, I left there in 2019. Mm -hmm. 
majority of the abuse, sixty percent of the alleged perpetrators came from the home hmm. by parents, step parents. When we met children who they would call um, have difficult um, deviant, all kinds mm -hmm. of names we have for them. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, they used to be called before beyond control. They're not called that be, again. They used, be, they used to call them beyond control children. Mm -hmm. And we used to have a running joke in the children's authority. When you met the parents, it was the parents who were beyond control. <laughs> the, at, at, it's going back to leadership. A child cannot learn what they have learned unless they have seen it somewhere, yeah. experienced it. So when we talk about getting to the parents, mm -hmm. I think a lot of the parents still suffering from trauma that they went through and they never got help for. And I have come to the, the stage now of raising a teenager. My son is 16. And raising a teenager ain't, ain't no easy feat at all. Trust. <laughs> Trust. Ain't no easy feat at oh. all. And I see, I told him that, because we have a very candid relationship, my son and I. Mm -hmm. I say, I see why some parents give up. Mm -hmm. Because it's tough. Mm -hmm. But if you do, then what will happen um, yeah. and sometimes they tell themselves well people give up on me and look i make it but mm. did you make it mm. are you okay yes are you really the way you want to be mm. so we just have to make a call for parents and, and talk as much as we can mm. um we may even have to go into communities because some again the people who need it the most they absent themselves on the things that mm. are put out for them mm -hmm. right so we just have to start as it were like a movement mm. Uh, where we just, if, even if it's just pride mm -hmm. in who we are. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been told, you know, uh, running an organization that my natural hair is inappropriate. <laughs> inappropriate. The hair that goes out of my scalp, like inappropriate. <laughs> you know, and, and it was said by somebody of African descent. Hmm. So I said, well, how could the hair that growing out of my scalp be yeah, inappropriate. Probably. Have I ever looked on groom? Mm -hmm. Have I ever looked on professional? But even before you go to the looked on groom or look on professional, whose standard Correct. are we following when we say that is unprofessional and that untidy? Mm -hmm. The people that we follow in that from do even have hair like us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. But we're using their yardstick mm -hmm. to judge yes. ourselves. I remember working in the phone company. Nobody like to call yeah. the name. I remember working in the phone company that like green now. Mm. <laughs> and a big fro. And it being insinuated in the back now, but it's smart because I was looking for a payday. Yeah. But nobody never come to me directly and say thing. But people say it intimidated. So I had to ask them. What about it? I say, this is natural hair growing on my head. I say, right now, all it had is water. <laughs> water to, so that the Afro Congo pass you easy now. Mm. I say, but on the other hand, you have a chemical in yours that could damage you, damage a child, or whatever, whatever. And you comfortable knowing that, watching me to tell me my hair intimidated. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know? And, and that's some of the problems I have. Like, a lot of the things that we. Uh, we do the yardsticks we use to measure ourselves. Yes, you're right. It's holdover from what we call colonial colonial days yeah. now. Mm -hmm. You know, in a few days' time, Trinidad and Tobago are going to celebrate independence. Independence. Yeah. But, but I keep asking them, independent from what? Yeah. When we rules is still colonial rules, mm -hmm. we education system, we never revamp it. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right? So this one young African woman at a Push even harder. Now I applaud you, you know, because some of the things you just say here that you want to actually, like we're just saying about going into the communities, is something I've been saying a while now that um, you can want to realistically give a lecture targeting African people and to talk certain things mm -hmm. in UWE. Yeah. You can't do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, because how much people from certain parts of what we call the ghetto, I really don't like that too, man. Mm -hmm. I was. Right? <laughs> How much of them leaving where there is to go up in UWE to hear a lecture? Mm -hmm. Most of them will be never even walking the grounds of the university. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. We had to go, we had to go there. Yeah. I applaud you and that and I wish you all the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So folks, um, quick break and we'll be back. I know it's a, it's a solid topic. Yeah. And if you give me a chance, we'll go for more too. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll take a quick break.